we gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Uh, a very happy <coughs> new year. And if that confuses you, it is because today, Advent Sunday, is the first day of the Christian year. And we begin by lighting the first of our Advent candles, which means I am going to need someone to give me a hand in a second. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, among whom we wait in joyful expectation for Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. We give thanks that we are receiving with them a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Holy Lord, God of the Patriarchs, have mercy upon us. May we, like Abraham and David, obediently follow you this advent. Hear us, O Lord. May we open the hearts to receive you, O Lord of life. If you are here for Sunday Club, or if this is your first time here and you are a Sunday Club age, time to follow Jill through into the later chapel. Let us confess our sins. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In silence we pray. <coughs> Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness, and to put on the armour of life, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, 
through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and A reading from the first letter to the Christians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
according to Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Back in 1997, early in my final year in theological college, a recently ordained friend was returning to college for an overnight visit, in order that the following morning, he could submit his thesis for his master's degree. He arrived back in Oxford just in time for college dinner. We retired for drinks afterwards and he suddenly imparted the information that he'd left his briefcase with the said beautifully printed document inside the briefcase back home in furthest West Wales. In order to get it to the binders by eight o'clock the following morning in central Oxford, he had to turn right round and head back down the M4 and come back again. This would mean driving through the night. Being the good friend that I am, I said that I'd accompany him. Not being assured to drive his Renault 5, anyone remember a Renault 5? I couldn't take part in the driving, but I could accompany him and keep him awake through the dark hours of the night. Well, we drove through the night all the way back to St. David's, collected his briefcase, and drove back to Oxford, 
getting to the bookbinders just in time before we both then collapsed with exhaustion back at college. My friend reliably informs me that whilst, yes, I was chatting away quite happily for a lot of the journey, I also spent quite a lot of it snoring. <laughs> My response was that in one way or another, I managed to keep him awake and concentrating on his driving. Well, today's gospel <coughs> could well serve as the opening to the highway code for the church. Stay away. In the passage we've just heard, Jesus reminds us of the consequences of not being sufficiently awake, of being focused or alert to what is happening in our lives. We can apply our concentration to all the usual activities such as eating, drinking, getting married as someone's about to do, buying a house, starting a new job. Yet sometimes we can miss the deeper opportunities to be wholly present to the deeper aspects of existence, aspects which include God. Wrapped in our own warm, comfy blanket of self-absorption, we, we are unaware of the coming of God, of our lives being gently touched by him. Jesus' language in the Gospel passage carries an awesome tone. Like Noah's flood, his coming may well be overwhelming or swiftly out of the blue when we least expect him, like a burglar in the night. But the encounter with the Son of Man will be a life-changing experience. Throughout Scripture, we find that people are almost physically hurled into a new direction by an encounter with God. We see that not only with the Apostles, but also with the blind, who could find they could see for the first time. The leper, whose skin was cleansed by Jesus and who was welcomed back into community. By the leg, who could once again leap and dance for joy. They were people who were alert to the coming of the Son of Man and who were therefore transformed. They were alert and focused on the possibilities God offers. We may well be sceptical about such an account being available to us here at the end of 2023 in Karsholt. Like road accidents in the night, they only ever happen to other people. But Jesus says that this is not so. The touch of God is available to all, to you and to me. So, stay awake. Each new day summons us to wake from sleep. Sometimes we can't wait for the morning to come. We wake up in eager anticipation and we feel good to be alive. We're thankful to God for the gift of a new day. But other times, we are apathetic to waking up. We greet the new day without any real enthusiasm. For whatever reason, life may well be monotonous for us. So when we wake up, we can either be Tigger or Eel. How we greet each morning is important. If we do so with joy and thankfulness, then we bring energy and enthusiasm to the tasks which lie before us. But if instead there is apathy and dread, we tend to face our tasks in a slightly little, don't know, can't be bothered, half-hearted way. And that means entering the day with a severe handicap. Of course, no one has a perfect life, and all of us whatever our particular circumstances, have to face difficulties from time to time of one sort or another. 
circumstances are beyond our control. But our conduct is very much in our power. What makes the difference is how we respond to our particular situation. Advent issues a wake-up call to us, and it has an awakening power. Unless we are spiritually awake, we are only half living. To be awake spiritually means to be open, receptive, vigilant, active. The second part of our Gospel passage is sometimes known as the parable of the doorkeeper, and it has a long and complicated history. It's possible that the original fourfold division of the day, evening, midnight, cock crow, morning, accommodates Roman usage and replaced the local Palestinian divisions of first, second, and third watching. So the original parable, as told by Jesus, may well have gone something like, and I paraphrase very heavily, a man goes out to a dinner party. During the evening, he commands his doorkeeper to be on watch for when he will come back home and knock at the door. The parable concludes with the exhortation to be permanently watchful for the Lord. There's every likelihood that Jesus' first hearers and the very early church viewed those words as a way of preparing them for the second coming, which they anticipated would be quick. Yet, over those first decades, the post-East church had to adapt its understanding of this parable as it became clear that the second coming, the parousia, was not imminent. Now, there was not one final crisis, but rather a phased process. The ascension of Jesus, his waiting in heaven and then his final return, so this exhortation to watchfulness is one which is applied to a waiting church. So, if Jesus through the Gospel, rebukes us for not being awake for his coming, he cannot simply be referring to something which would be the end of the world. We must surely also mean the encounters we have with him in the ordinary, everyday events of life. Jesus comes to us through creation, in the delicate scent or texture of a rose, something which we may well hardly notice because we're not alert to God's presence, hidden within the beauty which he has made. He may well come to us through the smile of a child full of promise for the future, or through the humble kindness of one person towards another. He can come to us in death and bereavement, as the one who suffered in order to share our suffering and thus console our sorrow. He comes to us here in the Eucharist, but even in this most sacred encounter we can be asleep to the presence of Christ. We can be certain that Jesus will come to us, but not of how or when. If we drive too quickly or too drowsily through life, we may be totally unprepared for a sudden encounter with the Son of Man, a brief and vital opportunity to change our lives may well be lost forever. We do well to remain alert each day and every day to the wonderful possibilities which await us. Spirituality is about waking up, about understanding those things, seeing those things, hearing those things, which help to bring us into the nearer presence of God. To be spiritually awake 
means being attentive to God and others. In a real sense, it means to be living in love. So this first Sunday of Advent, in particular, we have two options. To be a watcher or a sleeper. It is easy to be a sleeper. But those who sleep all the time waste their lives. It's harder, but much more rewarding, to be a watcher. To watch means to be awake, to be alert, to be concerned, connected, active, interested, and to care. Jesus urges each and every one of us to stay awake and to be on our guard to be on the watch, waiting for him. We have nothing to fear, and we have everything to gain from Advent Sunday's alarm and wake of call. Amen. I believe in one Father oh, Almighty. Pray for strength, stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer. <clears throat> Holy and loving God. At the start of this Advent, we pray that day by day we may be watchful, we may be awake, waiting with joy for your coming in our lives. We pray for this patch of holy ground, giving thanks for all who have worked and worshipped here across the centuries, for your community gathered here now. For this Diocese of Southern, for Christopher and Rosemary our bishops, and for all Christian communities in their care. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and loving God, we pray for your world. We pray that we may be wise and faithful stewards of all that you give us. So we pray for all those gathering 
at the COP summit. We pray for those parts of your world scarred by warfare, corruption, persecution. For those who strive to bring about or to maintain peace. Lord, in thy mercy, Holy and loving God, we pray for the communities in which you set us, that we and they may be awake to your touch in our lives. We give thanks for this community of Karsholt, for its diversity and history. We pray your blessing upon all who in any way are involved in our life. For all those involved in education, in business or commerce, those involved in healthcare, and all who work in the voluntary and charitable sectors. Lord, in thy mercy, holy and loving God, we pray for those whose names are laid upon the altars of our church, all those who have asked for our own personal prayers, and all those for whom prayer has been offered in this place in the past few days. We give thanks for all who minister healing, for local medical centres, hospitals and hospices. Lord, in thy mercy, Holy and loving God, we pray for those whom we love but see no longer, for those who have died in recent days, for all whose anniversary falls at about this time, and all those who mourn. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in thy mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Blessed Mary and all the saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us, to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
scattered in the fields, and the grapes, once dispersed on the hills, are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may thy whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of the Lord of all life, help us to work together for that 
day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Son and Holy Spirit are very welcome to receive the Blessed Sacrament this morning. If you don't want to receive, please do come forward with uh, your notice sheet or order of service for a blessing. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son.
O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faith as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome, uh, particularly for anyone who is visiting or uh, trying this out. It's good to have you with us today. Um, as you might have noticed, something else has been happening in church this weekend. It's our Advent Fair. We had uh, well over a thousand people through the doors yesterday. Um, do stay after Mass uh, for refreshments of, of varying sorts, it has to be said. Um, and do have a look at the art exhibition and some of the other stalls. Um, during the course of the afternoon there will also be some live music um, starting at 12 o'clock, uh, so do stay and listen to that as well. Uh, if you are here to support an application for a place at either our church school or another church school, don't forget to sign the register before you leave. Um, please do take the notice sheet away with you uh, or have a look at it either on the website or on Facebook. One or two things just very briefly to draw to your attention. It being Advent Sunday, um, this evening at half past six we have the Advent Carol service. Without doubt uh, one of the most beautiful services of the year when we start in darkness and move through to light thinking about the fall and moving through to redemption in words and music and candles. Please do come along to that if you're able to. And again, followed by uh, mulled pies and minced wine. I've been working very hard at not saying that for the last few weeks, so I've managed to say it quite deliberately. Come along and have mulled pies and minced wine this evening after the Advent carols. Um, a week on Saturday is Father Daniel's nuptial mass at St John the Divine, Kennington. Um, are there any places left on the coach, Marion? There are how many? Three, four. There are still four places left on the coach if you want to go to support Father Daniel and Charlene. Uh, if you want to do go on the coach, uh, please do have a word with <coughs> Marion um, or make your own way there. Everyone is very, very welcome to go along. There is a card to sign uh, which Marion has. Um, it, sorry, it's, it's over by the piano, the other side of the art exhibition. Uh, pretend that you're going into the choir master and you'll find the big card. If you want to um, make a donation towards uh, a wedding gift for the happy couple, again, if you have a word with Marion, and she will happily uh, deal with that for you. So that's on Saturday the 16th. Sunday the 17th, two weeks today, uh, we are only having the one Mass in the morning at half past ten. Uh, but please, please, please do come along if you can and encourage others to come because we will have Bishop Rosemary with us to preside and preach. Uh, she should have been here a couple of weeks ago for the confirmation uh, but was recovering from uh, hip surgery so she's asked to come and be with us during Advent. Um, so come along on the 17th at half past ten uh, as we welcome our area bishop on her first visit to All Saints. And then that evening, we will have the festival of nine lessons and carols, which will also be followed by mulled pies and minced wine, um, or whatever. I think that those are all the notices I need to draw to your attention. So time to hear what's been happening in Sunday Club this morning. If you were in Sunday Club this morning, come and tell everybody what you were doing. Keep watching, be alert, stay awake. 
was Jesus' message. So here's the thing, here's Jesus talking about staying awake and being ready. And we're talking about getting ready for the birth of Jesus. It's quite confusing when you're talking about a birth and then well, Jesus is already here. They all get mixed together. Well, that gospel was important because Jesus wasn't just talking about staying awake. He was talking about being ready for when he dies and when he's ascending back to heaven and when he comes again. And we're still waiting. Are we ready? Are we ready for it? That's the question. Then we have to think about being ready for something else. What are we getting ready for, guys? Christmas. Christmas. We're in the time of, what's this bit called now? Advent. We're in the time of Advent. We're getting ready. So this morning, we are getting ready. We are building what? What are we making this morning, folks? A crib. Who have we made this morning? <coughs> Mary and Joseph. Now, if anybody knows anything about being ready, it's Mary. She had nine months to think about it. And she had a bit of a challenging start at the very beginning when an angel came to tell her what was going to happen to her. So we're getting ready and we're building our space next week we're making two more figures to put in our nativity scene and we'll keep doing that until we've got a complete next week we will be starting to make shepherds and children <coughs> keep being awake be ready be ready for the coming of jesus would you like to read our prayer for us Mara? let us pray The Lord be with you. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon us. Scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this Advent and always.
Praise the Lord.